Hey everybody, it's Greg again. Another edition of Unbreakable Spirits. And this one is my sports wrap-up. Every weekend I do one of these shows wrapping up local Philadelphia sports as well as sports in general. Just my take on uh, the sports scene. So uh, I'm just a regular fan. Uh, I have no pretense of being anything more than that. I just do this little podcast. It doesn't go out, you know, to thousands of people. It's just my opinion. But if you want to know what a real sports fan thinks, here I am. So every week. Um, first of all, before we start, I got my Eagles Super Bowl hat on from back in 2017, and it's signed by two of my favorite guys, Ray Dittinger, the great Hall of Fame football writer from the from the area. And Angelo Cataldi, great uh, talk show host, sports talk show host in Philadelphia for over 30 years. He just retired. Uh, both great guys. I met both Ray several times, Angelo once. And, uh, Angelo is a really cool guy, very nice guy. We used to email each other back and forth in the day. Uh, never was a really... Uh, consistent caller to his show, but uh, I always listen. I always listen, especially after I retired. Uh, so, uh, Angelo, I do miss Angelo in the mornings, and uh, but hopefully he's having a great retirement. And uh, Ray Dittinger, what can I say about Ray? Uh, terrific writer. When I wrote my book, uh, An Unbreakable Spirit, he actually helped me out. I email him and uh, ask for some suggestions after sending him the, the manuscript. And he was so kind, as he is all the time, um, so kind to give me some uh, very valuable suggestions and tips on uh, writing. And uh, he's just a great, great writer. His latest book is uh, Finished Business. And I love his book. I just love about his career and uh, all the people he met, sports figures, uh, including Muhammad Ali. That's an unforgettable uh, chapter. And uh, he is just a, a very nice guy. And uh, can't wait to uh, bump into him again someday down the road. And so uh, and I want to get a few more signatures on this hat before I'm done. Uh, so we'll see where that, where that ends up. Uh, so first of all, we got to talk about those Sixers. Um, what a disappointment! Although uh, I'm not one of these guys who goes on Twitter or has a podcast and says I told you so, I told you so, I knew everything, I I was right about it from the start. No, no, no. Uh, but the one thing I did say on this podcast in my tweets. Uh, and to anyone who would listen on my on my uh, website, uh, I thought James Harden was done. I, James Harden had a few good games in the playoffs, but overall, James Harden is cooked. He's just a shell of himself. He's not what he used to be. And there was rumors that he's heading back to Houston and good riddance. So James Harden, I think, uh, although it, Looks like he's a nice guy. He was really very nice with that kid who got shot. Michigan State. He's a Harden fan. Harden had him to a few games. And that, uh, that was really cool. I have to give him credit there. But as far as basketball players are concerned, uh, he's seen his better days. I mean, uh, especially when he's looking for a tax contract, an extension, maybe three or four year. Uh, worth maybe two hundred million dollars. Uh, no, you could you could use that money elsewhere. Granted, James Harden uh, led the league in assists this year, but he holds the ball too much. He waits for the shot clock to dwindle down before the final makes a move. He passes it so well. I just think he's a bad influence on the team too. I mean, during the playoffs, he flew to Las Vegas. Uh, he just didn't seem like he was focused. He doesn't seem like he 
cares that much about winning the championship. Now, I may be wrong, but to me, James Harden is all about so I don't think he's a team player. I know he's friends with the GM, Daryl Morey. I hope Morey has some common sense there and does not bring Harden back. He can use that money elsewhere. Sixers may have a tough time this next coming season, but uh, after next season, summer of 24, there'll be more free agents out there. Sixers will have more money to spend. Um, uh, you know, I think they let ought to let Harden walk and just do the best they can piece around him. Now, even though Joel and he came up very, very small in the playoffs, I still think you have to keep him. I mean, number one, if you trade him, what are you going to get back? Are you going to get equal value for the MVP? I don't think so. A lot of people on the radio are calling for him to leave. Uh, he has no heart. Um, that may be true. I don't know. Uh, I know he turtled up pretty bad at the end of the Boston series, at the end of the game six, which will haunt the six years forever. That was the game that the Sixers uh, had to win at hope to uh, put away the Celtics and to move past the second round finally. And they didn't do it. And then they were a no-show completely up in Boston in game six. Um, I don't know. Maybe Embiid doesn't have the heart, but he's just got so much more talent. I don't think Maury will trade here unless he's just overwhelmed with a package for them. I'd certainly not trade him to the Knicks, which is going to kind of the river. If you trade a beat at all, it's got to be out west. So you only see him twice a year. Um, I would not trade him to the Knicks for fear that he's finally going to get it together and he would want the Sixers uh, for the next five years. I just going to trade him to the Knicks. So. I think what they should do is keep him be. He's still a great talent. He's not the MVP of the league, as we see now. Uh, he won it this year, rightfully so. But uh, is he the best player in the league? No, not, not by the show. But, you know, if you keep him be, he might be able to build around him with the offense should have always gone through Tyrese Maxey. And he was, I think, all that by James Harden. Uh, and uh, Doc Rivers did do a vaccine any favors. He benched him for a while, had him coming off the bench as a six man. That's not Maxi. Maxi's a starter, at least for now. He could be a valuable bench player if the Sixers have other talent in the starting rotation. Maxi could be this uh, Vinnie Johnson microwave guy coming off the bench, giving you instant offense right away. and He's in the lineup at the end of the game. So, um, but right now, I think it's important for Maxi to develop his skills. He's only 22 years old. He needs to start, and the ball needs to go through him. He's not a point guard, and he's small for an off guard, but uh, he's sort of an in betweener. Uh, the only way Maxi is going to grow is if uh, he plays. And uh, James Harden, I think, was just a bad influence for a modern point. So. I think they need to keep that seed. Uh, it's going to be hard. Sixers box themselves into this dilemma. Uh, next year, if they don't trade Ty, uh, uh, Tobias Harris, uh, he will come off the books as money. You know, books. But they may be able to trade Harris and get something decent. I mean, they definitely, Sixers definitely need a young point guard who's going to run the offense, distribute the ball. Uh, and they need wing help to forward to it. very weak. Um, they could use a small forward and they could use a good shooter. Uh, this team lacks shooters. And they, they need a power forward, someone to help Joel and Beat on the boards. Uh, so for a team that made it to the second round, who team that won uh, a lot of games this year, the Sixers have a lot of points. And uh, we're looking at guys like P.J. Tucker, who's 38 years old. Fortunately, they gave him a multi-year contract. So he's going to be around for another year or two. Um, they just uh, boxed themselves into a corner. Daryl Morey is 
not a good general manager. I wish he would have went along with Rivers, that Rivers was fired this week. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. What Warren can do is uh, let James Harden walk, keep Joel Embiid, unless he gets an overwhelming package of good young players and high draft picks, uh, sort of like uh, the Utah Jazz did when they traded their stars, Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. Um, uh, Maury's got to be creative. I mean, it's about time he went to work. You know, other teams are creative. Look at the Lakers. Uh, they uh, they were a mess at midseason, but they redid their team, and uh, they're in the playoffs now. So, uh, so it can happen. Uh, they just need to get wiser as far as drafting. They need to get wiser as far as free agents and trades. <clears throat> so, uh, whenever you have Joel and you have a chance. But uh, the Sixers definitely need to do something because right now, let alone getting out of the second round, uh, you know, they're nowhere near winning a championship. Look at some of these other teams who are still in the playoffs. Denver, Miami, the Lakers, the Celtics, and uh, the Sixers just don't match up with those teams. Uh, no way. So, so it should be an interesting summer to see what happens with the Sixers. Um, we'll see what happens. It's, it's going to be very interesting. As far as the other playoff games are concerned, I still think Denver's going to win it all. They have the drive, they have the motivation. Jokic, it's got all these MVP awards, but it does that have, have a championship. I think he's driven. You know, we saw the Nuggets win the first two games of the series with the Lakers, which they should have. They were the home team. It would be very hard to beat at them. Now let's see what happens tonight. They go to LA for game three. Will the Lakers make a two to one? Or will the Nuggets take a stranglehold on the series? We go up to easy. Um, you would think that the Lakers would win tonight at least to make it a two to one series. Um, I don't think the Lakers will win the series, I think the Nuggets will win. But uh, here's a chance tonight for the Lakers to, to get a little closer. Um, it's a hard, it's, it's a hard assignment for the Lakers. I mean, even if they win their two games at home which they should do, defending their home court. I mean, it's a two out of three series, and two of the games are in Denver. And let's face it, that altitude in Denver is, is a factor. Uh, until you get used to it, and I think LA got used to it in, this, in game two. But in the end, they, Denver just exploded it in the end. It just it worked up to me. So... Uh, I think eventually, no matter how many games it takes, then we're still going to win too. As far as the East Coast Conference is concerned, I mean, we see, surprisingly, Miami has gotten off to a 2-0 start. They, look, they won both games in Boston. Uh, and that really makes me angry as far as being six and three in the past. We knew Boston was a flaw team. Uh, they're not a good team at home, like Denver is. So many other teams are in playoffs. Uh, they're flawed. They could play great. Jason Tatum just gets for 51 points one game, and then the next game he could look uh, average. Jalen Brown looks like he wants out of town. Uh, the other players are half hearted. You know, I mean, uh, Al Horford, you can see he's getting old. And they've got some good bench players, Brogdon, they're white. Uh, but, uh, there's something missing on that Celtics team. I, I don't think they have a very good coach. I think that definitely if the Celtics get bounced in this round, they're going to uh, probably look for another coach. Uh, that was the thing, you know, before the series started, I said, I wouldn't be surprised if Miami won, even though Miami was an eighth seed and Boston was a two seed, and uh, Boston was way heavily favored to win the series. Uh, not surprised because Miami has a great great coach. Uh, Miami plays tenacious defense. Uh, they have revenge from last year when Miami lost to Boston in the playoffs. 
And uh, they have a, they have a killer player, Jimmy Butler. Right? He's a money, money player. Uh, sure, Jimmy Butler has never won a championship before. But he may be on a mission, too. Jimmy Butler against Jokic in the finals would be a great call. Um, so here we've got the Heat up 2-0, taking both games in Boston. <clears throat> we go back to Miami to our I can see Boston winning game three with close. I can't see them winning both games in Miami. I think Miami comes back to Boston up three to one, and Miami closes it out maybe in game six or five. So big upset. Yeah, Boston, uh, good for them. I, I don't like Boston. I'm sorry. Uh, and in that game seven against the Sixers, they had their Superstar stole the game, Tatum and Brown, with three minutes to go, and they're up by 27, 30 points. So they really wanted to rub it into the Sixers. So I'm not sorry that Boston is crumbling uh, as, as we speak. So, uh, <clears throat> hopefully, Miami finishes them off, and it will be the Heat and the Nuggets in the finals. Whereas, uh, now I picked the Heat to come out of the East. The reason I did was because they're, they were a hot team. I always like to go with hot teams going into the playoffs. Um, they're hot for a reason. They're playing well. This Miami team may not have the talent as Boston, but they're a team. They play hard and they play tough defense and they're a great coach. And uh, <clears throat> they know how to play basketball. Um, so I... Uh, I always like to go with the hot team. Uh, we see that in hockey now, the Florida Panthers. Boy, Miami's, the Florida's having a great sports season, aren't they? You've got the Tampa Bay Rays in first place in their use. You've got the you know, Panthers come out of nowhere and are in the uh, semifinals, and they're up one game to zero. How about that four overtime game the other night, <laughs> excuse me, between the Panthers and the Hurricanes, four overtimes. And that game was uh, only uh, a minute or so away from uh, going into a fifth of the time. Playoff hockey is incredible. Uh, <clears throat> Panthers, hot team again, coming out of nowhere. Just like the Seattle Kraken one. They went pretty far. <laughs> and uh, no matter what the sport, football, Baseball, I like a hot team. I mean, look at the Phillies last year. We're hot going into the playoffs. Once you get in, just get in. And uh, once you get in, anything can happen, right? So, <clears throat> so I wouldn't be surprised if the Florida Panthers win the Stanley Cup. Wouldn't be surprised at all. Would I be surprised if Miami wins the NBA title? Yeah, even now, I think so. But I definitely think it would be Boston of two games to none. I think they get to the finals. <clears throat> so uh, kudos to my to Florida sports. They're, they're, uh, they're really stepping up. Like 70 times down in Florida. <clears throat> anyway, um, so the playoffs have been a lot of fun this year. Not in hockey playoffs, basketball playoffs too. A lot of fun to watch. Uh, no fun that... Uh, our Sixers got bounced out of there, but uh, if you look at it objectively, uh, it's been a fun playoff uh, run uh, to watch Jokic, uh, what a great player he is, um, and the Nuggets, you can explode it in time. Great fun. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to say I'm not a big Flyers fan, but I try to go to a game or two every year, and uh, I like the Flyers. I'm just not a big, big, big fan of them with the other uh, teams in the league. But I will say, I was really happy that Keith Jones, Jonesy, from WIP, Radio Fade, or former Flyer, is now the president, the president of the Flyers. Can you believe that? President. Um, I'm happy for Jonesy. And I think, you know, most of all, I think he is going to turn the Flyers on. Why? But I think he knows hockey. I think he definitely knows hockey, being a broadcaster and 
only player who knows hockey. He knows the other players in the league. I think most of all, he brings a face to the Flyers. The Flyers, for many years, their face was gritty, their mascot. And uh, they didn't have Flyers were without a superstar player. They still are, really. A uh, faceless corporation owned them. They still are. So when you think about the Philadelphia Flyers, who do you think about? Right? Uh, so Jonesy may be that face. He's got a lot of people. Very in tune with the, the press and with the fans. He's going to be very accessible. You know, I think he brings a much needed face to the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, hopefully, he's going to be able to draft really well. That's where the Flyers need to go to. Uh, you know, if he makes any trades at all, picks up any free agents, hopefully, we're going to be better as far as that is concerned. But really, it's through the draft that the Flyers have to build. So even with Jonesy on board, there may be some rocky times still. Uh, because, you know, it didn't take uh, overnight to get bad. It's going to take uh, time to get good. So uh, I can see what's going to be another three to five years before the Flyers are relevant again, make the playoffs. But as long as they're going in the right direction, I think the fans will be okay. So <clears throat> the Eagles, well, the draft is done. Uh, you know, we're, we're heading into June, uh, still mini camps, still be done for a while. Training camp officially will open in July. The schedule came out, as we know, last week. Tough schedule. Uh, if, uh, Eagles may not win as many games as they did last year. The 114, that's going to be really hard to duplicate, even though I feel the Eagles have a better team this year. Harder schedule. I still don't find some people thinking they're going to be below 10 and a half games. Wins. I don't see that happening. Uh, some people are all over the Dallas Cowboys. Every year, the Dallas Cowboys, you know, and they always come up small in, in big games in, in the playoffs. I mean, they always do. So no matter what the Cowboys may look like uh, in preseason, and before the season starts, uh, you got to take in mind that the Cowboys always choke when it comes to the big games. Um, so I think the Eagles win maybe 11 or 12 games this year. And as long as they get in uh, to the playoffs, look out. I think they, I know it's very hard to get back to the Super Bowl, let alone the playoffs. After you've lost the Super Bowl, there's that old jinx there. Same way with winning the NFC East. No team has won, no team has won the NFC East. Two years in a row since 2004, and the Eagles did it. Um, <clears throat> but the Eagles have a, a, a really, really good team. And this may be the last year for Jason Kelsey, uh, some of the other uh, key players on the team. Uh, they're going to be, you know, including Lane Johnson, uh, they're going to be winding down too. And I think the Eagles. They're really going with all in, I think, as they should, to win a championship either this year or next. Um, yeah, they still have Jalen Hurts. He's they still have Jalen Hurts. They just signed him to an extension. They had a really good chance. And all those great receivers, they picked their trade for DeAndre Swift, running back for the Lions. Uh, I just think the Eagles are just loaded. You know, I think. Yes, it would be nice to get that home field advantage again in the playoffs. Uh, that helped them get to the Super Bowl last year, as it did in 2016. So, uh, <clears throat> but my feeling is the Eagles could win anywhere, either at home or on the road, as long as they get in the playoffs. And I think they're, so. so things are kind of on hold with football right now, but everything will be gearing back up pretty soon as training camp starts. And then late summer, early fall, it's football all the way, baby. Football all the way, I can't. But I am looking forward to uh, to the end of the baseball season. Now, final, final uh, category of the Phillies. 
Phillies have lost five in a row. They got beat 10 to 1 yesterday at home to the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs are a decent team, but they're decent. They're average. They may even win the uh, NL Central. I think they will, especially since the Cardinals have got uh, such a bad start. The Cubs beat them, and I didn't realize this until last night. So, uh, all six games they played last year, the Cubs won. They win again last night, 10 to 1. What is it about this Cubs team that the Eagles, uh, the Phillies can't beat? You know, I just think the Phillies, it's a combination with, with, uh, with that. They're just not the same team as they were last year when they went to the World Series. They miss Reese Hoskins in the middle of the lineup. The pitching isn't as good. Uh -oh. They're just not the same team. They're making stupid mistakes in the field, uh, on the base pass. Uh, Trey Turner has been absolutely awful so far after signing him to a max contract for, what, maybe 10 years? Uh, you got to know that Trey Turner is a hell of a ball player, and he's going to get out of it somehow, but when, right? You don't want to fall too far uh, off the Braves and the Mets. We're going to be playing the Braves and the Mets in another couple of weeks, first time this season. So uh, <clears throat> Phillies have to hang in there like they did last year. The thing that concerns me about the Phillies is they're playing like they did early last year. And they played under Joe Girardi. There was no life, no urgency, no movement on the base pass. Uh, Phillies are a team that's built for power at Citizens Bank Park, and they're not hitting home runs. They're not stealing bases. They're, they're just there. I mean, they're just there. And uh, Rob Thompson gave them life after he took over for James Rarty in June last year. He didn't play an play analytic ball. He uh, played old school baseball. And uh, the team benefited from that to the point where they got hot they got into the playoffs and they got to the World Series. They were two games away, away from winning the World Championship. Uh, now it seems like sometimes Rob Thompson is managing scared and he's afraid to make the wrong decision. Uh, I think he's relying too much on analytics again. And we should just forget about that nonsense and go back and manage the way he did late last year when he took over the club. Uh, I mean, what are the folks supposed to do? Every spring, change managers and something like that. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, Grace Harper's back. Uh, he's playing well. Hopefully, he'll be back in, you know, in about another month or two. But uh, is it a hangover from the playoffs? No, there's a good reason why these teams who make the Super Bowl or the World Series don't have a good uh, season next season. Are, are they full of themselves after that? Are they tired after that run? The pitchers, I don't know, maybe Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola are tired. They pitched into the into October, November, uh, which they normally don't do. Um, what's the reason? Why are they so flat? You know? Well, we'll see. I mean, as I said, they're playing the Nets in the Braves soon. They'll be playing the Dodgers again. So I'm playing some uh, big, big name teams here. They, they've got to pick it up soon. Um, but, you know, if that's all you are, and if you can't pick it up, uh, what can you do, right? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to find out uh, about the Phillies in the uh, weeks to come. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to the game Wednesday afternoon during the next the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Dodgers actually are a good little team, you know? They're hanging in there at last. Uh, I think they're actually going to make the playoffs. I don't think they're going to win the West. I think the Dodgers are still the best team after the World Padres, but uh, I think they're going to be in the playoffs. Now, Dodgers that's a young team. They're exciting. I can't wait to see them play on Wednesday afternoon. Um, and hopefully the Phillies beat them. We'll see what happens. But, uh, Rest of baseball, we've got the Tampa Bay Rays and America the East are still on top. Um, uh, you got to be disappointed <laughs> in the Yankees, the way they're playing. Um, I'm not, because I'm not a Yankee fan. Uh, 
the Yankees and Red Sox, who would have ever thought there'd be two teams uh, on the bottom of the mid to the east. Uh, Baltimore is playing well, as we kind of thought they would. They're an up-and-coming team. Will they make the playoffs this year? I hope so, but for Baltimore's sake. Uh, in the Central, the Guardians continue to play, eh, left baseball. The Twins seem like they're the class of that division in the American Northwest. Nobody has really taken the bull by the horns. And meanwhile, the Astros are getting back up in the first place again. I mean, the Mariners, the Angels, the Rangers. The Rangers have been good, but no one is really uh, running away with the, with, the, with the race out there. The Rangers have played better than I thought they would. Um, <clears throat> they may end up giving the Astros the best run for the money. Although I like the Angels. I, I think if Trout and Otani get hot together, uh, who's going to beat them, right? So we'll see. Um, yeah, National League West, I mean, it's the Dodgers, even though the Dodgers lost a lot of people off their team, and they're still the Dodgers, you know, they still have young people coming up through the farm system and they've got money to spend in case they want to make some additions before the trade deadline. Uh, Dodgers are still the Dodgers, they're still good. You never can't them. Uh, in National League Central, Cards are starting to play a little bit better, but they kind of dug themselves a hole at the beginning of the year. The Brewers are hanging in there. The Pirates are coming back down at them after getting off to a tremendous start. Uh, they've got down dropped down to second place in National League Central. Um, and, uh, you know, let's see if the Cards can come back. Well, it's very rarely see the Cardinals team in last place of any any season. So uh, let's hope that the uh, cards get it together and, and come back. And the, the National League East, again, the Phillies are just, they did have second place there for a while uh, over the Mets and the Marlins. Marlins are playing decent ball in a couple games over 500. But uh, Phillies have proceeded to go on this five game losing streak, uh, including a sweep in San Francisco, which is a hard house to the Phillies. They have it one out there in two years. So, uh, boys are back home and let's see what they do. I mean, meanwhile, the class of the division is the Atlanta Braves and they keep bringing up young people from their farm system. Uh, guys get hurt, but Max Street got hurt. He's out for a couple months, but they just plug somebody else in and keep going. I love, uh, Spencer Strider, the young pitcher. I need to be in strikeouts this year. He's a good uh, good young pitcher. That way they always seem to come up with those arms and those bats when they need to. And I hate to say it, but they're a class of the division right now. So <clears throat> all in all, it's an exciting time to be a sports fan. You know, even in horse racing, we've got Freakness going off there. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a great time to be a sports fan. Uh, in the spring. It's my favorite time of year, along with September, when the pennant races are winding down and the football is starting. So, good time to uh, be a fan. So, we'll see what happens. Huh? I, I wish you guys a great, uh, great weekend. Enjoy all the sports out there, especially enjoy the Phillies playing tonight. Or this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon at home against the Cubbies and enjoy the NBA playoffs, the NHL playoffs. It's been exciting so far. And uh, just have a good time and have so talk to you again next week for the sports wrap up. And uh, I'd love for anybody who wants to be on the show with me, let me know how to rap about sports, talk about sports again. And that'd be really fun. So just hit me up on Twitter or send me an email. Or say, I'd like to be on the show. Maybe debate a little bit or whatever. And it'd be great to have you. So, all right, sports fans, thanks a lot for tuning in. See you again next week. Bye.